Good morning and welcome back to my channel. You'll have to forgive me because I am still absolutely chock-a-block with cold. So if I have a bit of a coughing fit, bear with me. Uh, right, what a week. Uh, it's been so cold, so wet, so autumnal. And this morning it's absolutely freezing. But we've been up, we've been to group, didn't stay because I'm cough, 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 cough. And it was um, a taster and you know I'm not into those. So, right, here we go with my week. I feel like I'm between a rock and a hard place this week because I still can't make myself eat breakfast. I just don't want it. I've got to get back to that because it's not doing me any good. I know all these things. You know, in my head I know these things, but they're not easy to do. I've also been getting pretty obsessed about calories and it's no good for me. I've lost 13 stone without giving a mind to how many calories I'm eating. I keep finding myself eating my food for the day and then working out in my head how many calories have I eaten? Oh, for God's sake, Jane, stop it. You know, that's what I'm saying to myself, just stop it because I'm doing myself no favours. I have never been obsessed by calories. I do not calorie count and I've got to stop watching videos on YouTube by not slimming more people, by all sorts of people. There's, um, you know, lots of health stuff out there and everything I seem to kick on at the moment is related to cal calories. And um, I'm not watching uh, people who've left Slimming World and gone over to calorie counting, not because I don't like those people, it's just that that's not for me. And I'm getting obsessed with watching health videos about calorie counting, intermittent fasting and all these things. Now, I've always had an eating window. My eating window is getting smaller because I'm not eating breakfast and it's absolute bloody insanity, Jane. I'm telling myself this. I'm not telling you, you can do what you like. I'm telling myself I'm behaving like an insane person. I've put myself between a rock and a hard place. I'm averaging 16, 1700 calories a day and then thinking, am I eating too much? What the hell am I playing at? I'm not eating too much. That's a fine number of calories for me, for the sort of lifestyle I've got, for the size of person I am and everything. And I've got to stop thinking to myself, oh, I mustn't have that because it's X amount of calories. I know I'm doing it and I know I've got to stop it. So this week I've had a great week of food, um, not eating breakfast, but eating more with my lunch and eating more with my evening meal. And is it working for me? Yeah, it's working for me because this week I've got to maintain, which is fine. I'm, I'm one pound over target. I'm 130 pounds. That's fine, but it's not where I want to be. I want to be back at target. And since I had that massive blip and ate myself back up to nine stone 13 and a half, I have found it quite difficult to get back down to nine stone four. I didn't find it difficult to get to target in the first place. Why am I finding it difficult to get back down? One of the things I'll touch on, which might not mean anything to anybody else, but it's relevant to me. I've been watching a lot of videos this week about metabolism. And I think what I've done, because I eat relatively low number of calories, I mean 1600 a day is not high calories, because I eat a relatively no, low number of calories on a consistent basis, I've actually slowed down my metabolism. This is scientifically proven. I'm not just making this up as I go along. You can do that. And you know when I eat my normal food plan and I'm, I'm hovering around the same sort of weight and then I have a bit of a binge or I go out for dinner and I do things and I'm still reasonably within plan when I do some of these things but my calorie count's gone up quite in quite a jump. That's why I suddenly gain weight quite quickly. I mean, I, I've watched videos this week and I can't link them below because I don't save them or anything. But these videos do prove that if you eat a low calorie count consistently, your metabolism adjusts accordingly. So I've gone around since I was 25 years old saying, oh, woe is me, I've got a slow metabolism. I didn't have. I had a very normal metabolism. That's an old wife's tale in some ways, unless you have been restricting yourself on a consistent basis over a lengthy period, which looking at my plan is logical because I've been at Target for three and three quarter years. And so to stay at Target, I have to eat a sensible amount of food. So this week I am just gonna go back to working the plan properly 
two A's, one B, um, up to 15 sins, probably averaging around the 10 mark, because if you read your book, it says for optimal results, eat around 10 sins. That's where you get the best results. I'm going to go back to doing that. I'm going to go back to making myself have breakfast and not doing this ridiculous, I'm not hungry, I don't need it. Where did I pick that up from? Because I've always eaten breakfast. With this wheat free thing, which I feel is working because I do feel better around the middle. With that, I've, I've got myself at a bit of a, a stalemate. What do I eat for breakfast? What do I eat for breakfast? And I need to rethink that. So I'm gonna focus on rethinking that this week. The other thing I need to look at sensibly is the amount of fluids I take in. I've watched quite a lot of videos this week again about this. I know that I should not be drinking pint after pint after pint of fluid and attempting to flush anything out of my body because doing that, drinking an excessive amount of water, just purely washes the minerals straight through your kidneys and straight out of your brain. And I know the value of having potassium and such like in my body. Joe, can you name it? It's potassium, magnesium, or what's the other one? Calcium. Calcium, but it's another one, isn't there? The, the, it escapes me at the moment. Not iodine. But all of those things your body needs. Now, what I've learned over the last few weeks from several sources is a good way to hydrate your body. Because flushing massive amounts of water through your body does not hydrate you. It might rinse you out. It might wash your minerals out of you, but it doesn't hydrate you. And the best way to hydrate yourself is to drink the proper amount of water, but add some, some good quality salt to it. So I'm talking about Redmond salt, Celtic salt, red, uh, pink Himalayan salts, these kind of salts, not table salt, because table salt is no good for any of us. Table salt isn't really proper salt. It's just not. Um, I can't off the top of my head explain why. I just know it's not. Um, so... I was looking at what it says in Slimming World about how much you should drink. And in Slimming World, it says six to eight glasses. Now, a glass of water is eight fluid ounces. There's 20 fluid ounces in a pint, there's 34 fluid ounces in a litre. So a glass of water is eight fluid ounces. So if I was to drink, and I mean, I put you know water in my coffee. I'm not talking about just drinking water because I don't like the stuff, but I'm talking about fluids. Um, if I was to drink eight, eight ounce glasses of water a day, that would be 3.4 pints, right? Eight eights to 64, so 3.4 pints. If I was to drink in the way I was studying this week, a way of finding what's the optimum amount of water for your size and weight. Now, what they said to do was to take your body weight in pounds, halve it, and then convert that to fluid ounces. So my body weight in pounds today is 130 pounds. Half that, 65 pounds. Change that to fluid ounces, 3.5 pints. So Slimming World tells me I should be drinking 3.4 pints. The proper method, the medical method, tells me I should be drinking 3.5 pints. I'm gonna try and do that this week. I can't do this, I'm on my fifth hydrate mate, or I'm on, <laughs> I'm on my third hydrate mate. I just can't drink that amount of water. Um, when you're blind and you're out and about and you're suddenly needing the wee, needing the wee, needing the loo every five minutes, it's really difficult when you can't see. You can't just take yourself into a normal lady's loo where there's loads of cubicles and wash hand basins because when you're blind you can't find them. It's just a fact of life. It's the way I have to live. I'm used to that. So, yeah, I'm going to focus better on working the plan. I'm happy to have a maintain this week. At nine stone four, you know, um, that's an okay weight for me to be. But I'm not comfortable with how I'm eating. I'm eating plenty of vegetables, I'm eating a moderate amount of fruit, I'm eating a decent amount of protein, I'm eating healthy fats, I'm eating all the things I should be eating. But I'm not feeling it. Do you know what I mean? When I'm doing this plan and I'm eating properly, and I'm having three meals a day and nothing in between. I feel on top of the world. Even if I was as crap as I feel today with my cold and everything, I would feel on top of the world. Now, it's been a funny week because it's been wet and it's been miserable. 
Joe's been at work quite a lot. We haven't been out and about as much. But those things don't matter because I'm not relying on exercise, walking, etc. I've been very active in the house. I don't sit on my backside all day. There's something that's just not right about what I'm doing at the moment, and it's my head. My head is going, oh, half an avocado, weigh it. Oh, that's whatever many calories. What the bloody hell does it matter? Why am I doing this to myself? It's because I've been a dieter for 50 years. And my head keeps wanting to switch back into dieting. I've got a lifestyle, the slimming world, which is a lifestyle I can maintain for the rest of my life, which is a lifestyle I'm going to have to maintain for the rest of my life if I want to stay in this shape. I can go back to being 22 stone very easily. And I need to keep reminding myself of that, but it is not the route I want to take. So yeah, I feel like this week somebody should put me in a big sack and shake me up because my head needs a really serious wobble. There is nothing wrong with my food, but there's something wrong with my head this week. Yep, so that's me. That's where I'm at with the maintain. I should be over the moon with the maintain. It doesn't matter that I'm currently paying for group. I feel more comfortable paying my way. That's the way I live my life. I like to pay my way. So. What have we done this week? Well, a shopping thing that I'm going to tell you about in a minute that's been really, really interesting for me. But first of all, can I show you these frozen avocado halves? Have you got them, Joe? Yep. Now, this is my honest review on frozen avocado, right? These are three pounds in Iceland. Who makes them, Joe? Iceland. Oh, they're Iceland's own. Yeah. These are three pounds in Iceland and you get eight halves. Now, penny for penny, that is about what you would pay fresh avocados. I pay £1.40 in Asda for two fresh avocados. So eight frozen halves in Asda, if I was buying them fresh, would cost me £2.80. So penny for penny, it's not a cheap way of doing it, but that wasn't what I was looking for. I was looking for the convenience. They are good. They were recommended by a friend. I said I'd try them. They are good, but what have they got added to them, Joe? Mm. Is it um, vitamin C? Sodium ascorbate, calcium ascorbate, ascorbic acid. Ascorbic acid is vitamin C. So whatever they add to these fruits, and avocado is a fruit, it's not a veg, whatever they add to it actually does sweeten them. I can taste the difference because I don't do sweet that much. Now I'm not saying I don't like them, I'd give them 7 out of 10. This is, remember this is just my review, but I eat fresh avocado all the time, I know the difference. It changes the texture. They are much softer than a fresh avocado. And I like my fresh avocados reasonably ripe. I don't like them hard. Some people prefer it quite hard. But I like mine reasonably ripe. When I'm eating these, I'll take it out and defrost it, ready to add into a salad or whatever at lunchtime. They're okay for that. They're okay for adding to a salad because when you stir them into your salad, you're getting the creaminess of the avocado on your other um, salad things. But if I'm totally honest, that is not the way I like to eat avocado. I like to eat avocado just quartered as a fruit and hold it in my hand and just eat it like a slice of fruit. These, I would not do that with. But I would say that if you're used to adding them to salads, if you want to mash it on toast or crackers, if you want to make guacamole, they're probably great. Um, but as I say, for me, a 7 out of 10. I will buy them and I will always keep some in the freezer for convenience. Because one of the troubling things about buying fresh avocados is you can buy the ones that say ripe and ready to eat and you get home and they're not. And as I say, I don't like them hard. So, yeah, they're a decent find. And thanks, Susan, for the recommendation. Um, and I will buy them. But they're not what I would rely on when I want a decent, fresh, lovely avocado. Also this week when I was in Iceland, I picked up some of the Slimming World chips. Now we were told these had been relaunched because when they made them, when they cut them the first time round, apparently there'd been a water shortage and the potatoes weren't very good. So that was Slimming World's excuse for why they came out all small and bitty. So they relaunched them and they're now supposed to be uniform size thick chips. Well, they're not a thick chip where I come from in Yorkshire. <laughs> My mum don't cut chips like that. They're not what I call thick cut chips, but they're okay. 
The only problem still with them is that 25% of the bag were bits. Little skinny slithery bits or little one inch chips. And if you're going to put them in your active fry or your my fry like I do, or even if you're going to cook them in the oven, I like my chips cooked like a consistent crunchiness or whatever. I don't want some perfectly cooked chips and some little crunchy bits. So I can't even remember what they cost, but I don't think I'll be buying them again. I think I'm far better off taking like um, a baking potato, leaving the, scrubbing it, leaving the skin on, cutting proper thick chips and cooking my chips that way. Because I probably only have chips, I mean I've only had um, Slimming World chips. I did some myself when I got my my fry and I liked those and I've done these once. I'm not a chip fanatic. I could go a year and not miss chips. But it's just something different to add in, isn't it, occasionally. But I won't be buying these again. And the other thing I bought, <laughs> against Joe's advice, was a quarter pounders, Slimming World quarter pounders. Well, last time I had a quarter pounder, it came from McDonald's and it was really nice. These, no. The texture's totally wrong. They're more like, this is only my opinion, you might totally disagree with me, but they're more like mashed up paper than me. The texture of the beef was totally wrong. I didn't think, I didn't like seasoning. I just thought they were absolutely 100% disgusting. I know some people will enjoy them. We all have different tastes. I'm not knocking what other people eat. I'm just saying for me, no. In fact, I thought they were such rubbish that usually if I buy some food thing and I don't like it, I pass it on to Richard, my husband, and I'll say, try this, you might like it. These I passed on to the wheelie bin man because they just, no, I want to fed them to next door's dog. And I'm not that fond of next door's yappy dog. <laughs> but no, not for me. In fact, I'm not a big fan of the Slimming World meals. I, I just... A, I can't understand why they've made them so big and so many people in group are saying, oh, I only have half at a time. And B, I can't understand why they're not properly food optimised. Because they say, take this 500 gram meal or 550 gram meal and add one third veg. So they want you to be adding another 170 grams of veg on top of that. And most of the people in my group say the meals are too big to start with. So Slimming World, please. If you want us to food optimise and you want to sell us meals, food optimise them for us. Save us the hassle because I think a 550, 500 gram meal is plenty big enough without adding any more veg to it. I'd rather they practice what they preach, take a third away and give me some vegetables. Probably still wouldn't eat them, right? But still, I don't need that kind of convenience. I think a lot of people in my group who work shift works fine, um, work shift hours find them really useful and I think a lot of single people who come in from work and you know late at night find it really useful but I think Slimming World could do better I really think they could do better the only thing I actually like of all of this stuff is the Alan Gobi I think that's quite nice anyway so that's been my food experience at Slimming World this week and my frozen food experience this week now shopping I think I'm often late coming to the party, you know, with things. And we live very close to an Asda hypermarket. It's huge. It's a two-floor Asda, and it's massive. And for a long while now, they've had this um, scan-and-go shopping. And we've, we've just disregarded it. And we've gone round and we do our own shopping, and then we go to a self-service till, and we'll stand in a queue, generally behind somebody who's really slow, and I am the least patient of people. I admit to it. And we're standing in that queue and then, so you do your shopping and you take the stuff off the shelves and you put it in your trolley. And then you get to the scan and go and you take it off out of the trolley and you put it onto the conveyor belt. And it go, you're handling it again, it goes through the scanner and then you have to pack it into your bags. And the area where you can put your bags for packing is quite limited and we generally have three big shopping bags. And it's been a bit of a like, oh my God, this takes forever. You're handling the food over and over again, it takes forever. So I said to Joe when we were going to go shopping on Tuesday, I think it was, let's do the scan and go. Let's give it a go. So we got our trolley and we set up our three shopping bags that stood up one behind the other. And we went round with the scanner and it's such an easy process to join because all you do is you put in your phone number, your email address, <coughs> your name, 
you have to be over 18 to do it and then you press the button on this screen so you do it all yourself and there's a there's a wall of handsets and one lights up and you just take that sh that and you scan and go so we went over to the sushi section and got scanned our sushi's pointed to our bag down to the meat round the store back to the fruit and veg and as we were doing this we were able to pack our bags really neatly so you know put all your fruit and veg in one bag and all your your chilled stuff in another bag and what have you and it was just such a pleasurable way to shop and then when you've done that you just there's about four tills in the middle of the run of tills which say scan and go you go there what did you have to do then joe uh you just scan your scanner onto the screen onto the screen basically and it gave you no, a q sort no of there's thing. a there's a qr code on the on the till screen you scan that with your scanner and then it gives you a barcode for all of your shopping and then you scan that into the scanner yeah. <laughs> into the into the till yeah and it basically like loads up all the things that you scan yeah so he did that he scans this thing gets the barcode scans that into the till it just came up 70 pound and 11 pence you put your card in you pay you go and everything's already back everything's already back and honest to god it cut what 20 minutes off our shopping yeah. easily now i am aware that occasionally they will stop you and check your shopping because they do do that that's part of the routine of making sure that people are not just dropping the extra bottle of whiskey or something into their bag it's not something we do in fact it was quite funny because i picked up a toilet cleaner and joe put it in the bag and then he went oh my god i forgot to scan it so you've got to have your wits about you because you're in the habit of just shopping and putting it into your trolley, aren't you? But honest to God, it's a shopping revolution. I never realised that shopping could be such a pleasure. I don't like online shopping because I like to pick my own stuff. And whenever we've done online shopping, there's always been stuff you like, oh, we'll order a joint of gammon and you put lean or little fat and it comes and it's got a, a rind of fat right round it. That sort of thing I don't like. And also don't like the fact that we do a big, you know, a reasonably big shop because we'll do, the shop we did on Tuesday would last us probably four or five days and then we'll, we'll do to go again this weekend and we'll do another 70, 80 pound shop. And when you're buying meat and you want to be, you know, cooked meats or raw meats and you want to be eating it in four days time and you order it on uh, click and collect or you order it on home delivery and you realize all oh, your bloody meat's dated tomorrow I find that so frustrating but I am aware that the people who must do the picking in the shops because one of Joe's friends used to do that Isaac didn't they mm -hmm. those people are under pressure they're not just strolling around the store like we would I bet and I'm only guessing at this that they're doing more than one shop at a time and that they are actually probably time to do it so they're shopping under pressure. So they haven't got time to go through all of the minced beefs and pick out four on the best date. They're just four. It's all stock. You just take four. You know, these people don't do an easy job. So I'm not knocking it in that respect. I'm just saying that for somebody who shops the way I shop and wants to choose, what that kind of just a funny bugger, let's face it, wants to choose the way I want to choose, home delivery or click and collect just don't work for me but this scan and go i mean hopefully we'll see it in more supermarkets you might already use it it's probably in all the supermarkets near you but for me it's definitely going to be the way to go for shopping especially if i can take the trolley up the travelator and just have a quick wander around george because we've got a massive george department i'm well, sorry you're coming up to 25 minutes right i'm going to go i think i've said enough today it's all been a bit waffly and a bit whatever but i've managed to get through it without coughing my guts up which is amazing so thank you for watching thank you for being there thank you for letting me sound off and being prepared to listen to what i've got to say because that's i feel like that's where i'm at this week i haven't had a hungry week i haven't had a lazy week i haven't had any of those things but i have had i don't know i don't know where i'm at i need to pull myself together and start again so we'll be back next Saturday with the results of what I've done this week. Okay, take care everybody and remember, it works if you work it, it won't if you don't. And I hope you find a way to enjoy the plan you're on. Cheers. Bye.